Star of the day, Palantir, surging more than 20% to record highs, citing strong demand for its AI software, particularly from the U.S. government. It's not the only top AI firm now working with defense agencies. For today's Tech Check, our Deirdre Bosa has been digging into this growing trend. Morning, Deirdre. Hey, good morning, Sarah and Carl. So what a difference a few years makes, right? Silicon Valley's relationship with government defense and intelligence went from the reluctant and the uncomfortable to really the strategic and the interdependent. A main driver is, of course, artificial intelligence. And two of the most recent examples, they come from Palantir as well as Meta. Now, on the Palantir earnings call last night, CEO Alex Karp said many times that their U.S. government business is booming. In fact, it grew 40 percent year over year. That was a sevenfold increase that let him raise full year guidance and, like Sarah said, is now pushing shares to record highs. Karp said he's seeing the adoption of Palantir technology in every part of the U.S. government, including, quote, the White House, Congress, defense, intel. Then there's Meta, this week announcing that it is opening up its Llama AI model to U.S. agencies for military purposes. Now, that's a big deal because it marks a major shift from policy that had banned the use of its technology for such efforts. In a blog post, Meta's president of global affairs, Nick Clegg, writing that the company now backs the responsible and ethical uses of technology in the global race for AI supremacy. It's not quite so straightforward, though, especially when it comes to open source models like Llama. Even though Meta has restrictions on their use, these are difficult to enforce because they're public. It's an open source model. Reuters reported last week that Chinese researchers developed an AI model for military use on the back of Meta's Llama. A Meta spokesperson took issue with this report and said that America must embrace open innovation or risk ceding its AI lead to China. Now, this is not a new argument. Many proponents of tech's integration with defense or military, they're increasingly arguing that collaboration is essential for national security, that the U.S. has to maintain its competitiveness, especially in the face of China's rapid technological ascent. But, guys, while there is Meta, Palantir, even OpenAI is reportedly pitching its products to the U.S. military. Not everyone in tech is fully on board. We don't have the total integration. When Google acquired AI lab DeepMind in 2014, it committed to barring its technology for, from military or surveillance purposes. Now, like Meta, Google could reverse that policy, but Google has really been the poster child of Silicon Valley's skepticism and reluctance when it comes to government collaboration and could face significant employee blowback, as it has in the past. But, guys, let's bring it back to the bottom line, because if that is ultimately what matters most to these companies, then Palantir's blowout quarter, that tells us that there is big money at stake here. It's whether Silicon Valley can continue threading that needle between ethics and profitability. I'll tell you one interesting question of the morning, D, is whether or not uh, dramatic spending cuts and efficiency pushes in government, say under an Elon Musk-led charge, would be positive or negative for some of these contracts. Yeah, I mean, certainly for some of the defense startups like an Andrew, like a Palantir, which of course is now public, these are seen as beneficiaries if the Republicans win. But I would say that this is becoming more of a bipartisan issue, right? And it's the U.S versus China, the democratic versus the autocratic development of AI. So it's really sort of crossing party lines here. And as you see this integration, more partnerships, and I think the meta one was a really big deal. Yeah. OpenAI as well reversed its policy earlier this year, saying that they can use the technology because this is all about U.S. dominance and competitiveness in the face of international threats. It really reminds me of what Alex Karp, the CEO and founder of Palantir, always says, which is our competitive edge in this country is software. So clearly that's what it's all about. Thank you, Deirdre. Yeah.